In today's video, we are going to talk about PC BIO settings explained for beginners. Myself Muhammad Zubair and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, BIO settings allow users to access some settings that are not accessible otherwise. BIO settings are for advanced users and they are not for general users. While computers from different manufacturers can have slightly different menu in terms of the BIO settings, but in general, the functionality that BIOS offers is more or less the same. So first of all, I will restart my system and I'll go to the boot option of my system so that I can access my BIOS. So first of all, we need to restart our system and we will wait for it to restart and I'll go into my boot option. I'm using the HP machine. So the boot key for my machine is F10. And here we are into the boot menu of our BIOS. So first of all, we have our clock at the top. If you want to change the time and date, as you can see, we have time and date of today. You just need to go to that option and just hit enter. Now we can change the time and we can change the date. After that, I will just get out of this and we have main section. First of all, I will just hit enter and I'll go into that one. So here, first of all, we have our system information. We have product name. Then we have system family as my system belongs to HP Omen. Then we have our product number. After that, we have system board ID, processor type, total memory which is 32 gigabytes in total. And then we have BIOS version, BIOS revision, serial number, and we have many other information. If you see, we have factory installed OS. It means the default operating system that got installed into this laptop was Windows 10. And in BIOS, whenever we'll change something related to hardware, for example, let's say processor or RAM, we will first check it in the BIOS if the changes have taken place or not. And then we have some other information related to our system. After the system information, on the right side, we have our system logs, as you can see in here. Well, BIOS log categorized may vary depending on system type. And these logs can be very helpful in troubleshooting, especially when you want to track down the intermittent problems which can be most difficult. For example, let's say if the computer is randomly and intermittently shutting down, it might be due to thermal events that will be logged. It can be much easier to determine from the time and type of thermal event that the problem could be caused by either behavior. It can be environment or it can be a hardware failure. So logs can be very helpful in tracking down the potential problem. After that, we'll go into the next section and that is security so i will just hit enter in security we have password first of all and in password we have two types of password admin password and power on password well the admin password that is also called as supervisor password that gets used to prevent other from changing your bio settings and this password might also be called as user password then we have power on password. Well, the power on password prevents the computer from booting before it is entered. For example, let's say I have a password on my power on password option. My operating system will not boot up until and unless I enter my power on password. And make sure you remember these two password because there are only few ways that you can use to recover those password. And in some cases, we cannot recover them at all. After that, we have another section that says security. And in security, first of all, we have Intel Software Guard extension. Well, Intel Software Guard extension is a set of security related instruction codes that are built into Intel Central Processing Unit. Basically, they allow user level as well as operating system code to define private regions of memory. After that, we have TPM device, TPM state, clear TPM. 
well these are some of the settings related to dpm well if you remember when microsoft announced the windows 11 they said only those system will be able to install windows 11 those having tpm 2.0 so here we have some of the settings related to that tpm chip after that we'll go and let's see what do we have next here we have system security and this is something related to the security of our system i'll not go into that one after security we have configuration section let's go into that one in this one first of all we have our language we can select one of the five languages that are available we have english french spanish and we have two more after that we have virtualization technology it means let's say you want to use some virtual environment or you want to use some emulator into your operating system or into your laptop for that purpose you have to enable this virtualization technology option on otherwise you will not be able to use any virtualization or any emulation into your system after that we have hyper threading well the intel hyper threading technology allows a single processor to execute two or more separate threads concurrently when it is enabled a multi-threaded software application can execute their threads in parallel thereby it will improve the performance because now we will have more than one thread working in parallel and obviously it will improve the performance and it will save the time after hyper threading we have option that says fan always on well let's say you do some heavy work on your system and sometime your system gets heat up to prevent your system from heating up we have some fans in every laptop in every computer and those fan keeps our system cool but if you have disabled this option your fan will only work when your system will go into some serious problem but with this option on your fan will always keep on and it will make sure that your system do not go into any severe circumstances after fan always on we have action keys mode well f1 to f12 are our action keys if you have disabled this option you cannot access your action keys directly you have to use function key along with your action keys to access them but if i have enabled this one i can access my action keys directly and i do not need to use my function key along with it then we have our usb charging well some of the systems are coming with a power port and this power port works even if your system is shut down or even if your system is off and you can use that port to charge your different devices you can charge your phone your watches and many other things but if this option is disabled as it is disabled in my case now i cannot use that power port after that we have battery remaining time well by default i did not use to see remaining battery time on my battery icon in my windows 11 but with this option enabled now i can see the remaining time of my battery along with the percentage after that we have adaptive battery optimizer well this option will make sure that your system uses your battery in optimal way and obviously it will improve the performance and life of your battery at the last we have s3 s4 s5 wake on lan well s3 means sleep s4 means hibernate and s5 means shutdown state well the wake on lan or this is also known as wol feature this will wake the computer from a low power state when a network adapter detects a wake on LAN event. So that was all about the configuration section. Now I will just get out of this and now let's go into the next one which is boot options. So I will just hit enter. First of all we have post hotkeys on delays. Well a post hotkey delay is a delay in your bio system after you have typed in or posted the hot key here we have some of the options that we can do in terms of our post key for example we can go with the 0 5 10 15 or 20 seconds after that we have usb boot this is enabled at the moment 
well if we have disabled this option we will not be able to boot from any of the USB into our system from our boot menu. In order to use your USB as a boot media, you have to enable this option. After that, we have our network boot. Well, let's say you do not want to use any USB or any CD DVD drive as a bootable media. You can use your network to directly boot from it. Let's say I have an operating system on a network and I want to boot it. To use your network as a bootable media or as a bootable medium, you have to enable this option. And after you are done enabling this option, you have to choose either you want to go with IPv4 and IPv6 under the network boot protocol. So select any one of these and you are good to go. After that, we have legacy support. Well, let's say my system comes with the option that I can only go up to Windows 8 and I cannot install Windows 2000, Windows XP or Windows Vista because Windows 2000, Windows XP and Windows Vista are legacy system. And let's say I want to install those operating system and I want to check. For that purpose, I have to enable this legacy support option. Otherwise, I will not be able to use those legacy system into my system or you can say into my laptop. After that, we have secure boot. Well, secure boot is required for a lot of operating system to be installed into a machine. For example, Windows 11 will not get installed into your system until and unless you have secure boot option enabled. After that, we have platform key and we have pending action. Well, if we talk about the platform key, the platform is secured through a platform key that the OEM installs in the firmware during the manufacturing of your system. After our boot options, now we have boot keys. I will not go into that and I will just jump straight to my boot order. Well, if you see here, first of all, we have UEFI boot order and in that we have OS boot manager. Well, it means now my system will prioritize the Windows operating system boot manager because Windows has its own boot manager and it will prioritize it. Then we have USB or key USB hard disk. After operating system boot manager, it will consider the USB or your USB hard disk. That can be an external one. And then we have USB, CD, DVD ROM drive. It means in terms of your USB, you can use either USB or CD or DVD ROM that can be an external as well. And at the end, we have network adapter. Well, in case if you do not want to use your operating system boot manager or your USB, you can directly use your network adapter. And again, you have to select your network boot protocol as well as I have talked earlier. After that, I will just get out of this. And now let's go into UEFI configuration. I will just hit enter. Well, in that we have two things, network stack configuration, and then we have Intel or rapid storage technology. In terms of network stack configuration, it is used to run the BIOS of your device through the internet and networks around it. Instead of your computer's hard drives, this is very useful when you have a corrupted hard drive or you use a PXC, which is also called as pre-boot execution environment. Then we have Intel R Rapid Storage Technology. Intel Rapid Storage Technology is a Windows-based application that provides improvised performance and reliability for computers that are equipped with SATA disk for desktop, mobiles, and server platforms. We are done with this section as well. Now we have last section that is called as Exit. You might have an idea what this is all about. I will just hit Enter and here we have three options. Save changes and exit, ignore changes and exit, and at last we have apply default and exit. Let's say I have done some changes in my BIOS and I just want to exit from it. For that purpose, I'll go with the first option. And let's say now I do not want to save any change and I just want to exit from my BIOS. For that purpose, I'll go with the second option and let's say I want to go back to the default settings of my BIOS. So for that, I will go with the third option and after that, selecting my option, I'll just go to my yes and I will just hit enter. 
Now my system will reboot and it will restart normally. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Now I hope now that you have better idea that how BIOS works and what are its different settings. If that is the case, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. We'll get back to you in the next video. Till then, take care.